Nah, oh, yeah, basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, so what's going on, man? It's Great to have you on, man. man. Great to have you, you on. You were part of, like, my favorite NBA draft ever. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that 1990 draft with Coleman and, and Gary Payton. Yeah, so many. DC. Yeah, yeah, DC, that's my man, too. <laughs> yes, yes. So. yes. Definitely, and if people don't know, you know, this is Marcus Liberty, former yeah. Chicago product, yeah. number one number one prospect coming out of high school, went to the Flying Alana, given that name by Danny V, yeah. you know, then after that went to the Denver Nuggets, played for the Detroit Pistons, played overseas as well, this man has a full-on yeah. basketball career. Yeah, I, I ain't trying to cut Zay and Kilogram off, but we only got yeah, a couple bro. minutes with him. Yeah, y'all can feel free to ask him whatever, too, like, so, um, I just want to know what it was like. For, for playing basketball? Like, yeah, like, I want to know what it was like being, like, the number one, you're like, you're ranked number one high school player at one point. Yeah, let's start there. Back in the Chicago days in high school, how was that when you were coming out? You know, man, it was, it was just, I love to play the game, man. That, the rankings didn't even matter to me, you know. It was just, I just love playing the game. So whenever, wherever I go play, whatever park or, or whatever area, State, I always wanted to represent. So, and, and, and playing against you know different cats from different states, man, it was it was crazy. But at the same time, I knew I had to put on put on for my city, Chicago, man. Mm -hmm. And I made them proud, man. I made everybody back home proud. I mean, it was it was all in all, man. Like, man, you the next one after you know we had just lost our. our First number one player in the country in '85, uh, mm -hmm. Ben Wilson, ben the gun Wilson, man. Man. Yeah, and I was the next. Rest in peace, I'm and I was, Yeah, and I was the next one, you know, in line, man. So, and, you know, rest his soul, man. Mm -hmm. and, and the killing is still going on in Chicago. It's crazy. I mean, I wish there was something we could do about that. You know what I mean, like. Absolutely, absolutely. Some of the stuff is just senseless, and especially with the Mem Wilson one, that one was a senseless one in its own right. And, you know, you just hope that nowadays people can learn from them instances. And I know people like you are probably out there trying your best to teach those people out in Chicago about that and how not to make those choices. No doubt. And it's, and it's, it's hard, like you said, man. But I, I mean, I, I always thought, man, that like with my parents and, and a lot of my friends' parents, man, we were we were taught certain things, man, to, to know what was right from wrong. And a lot of times, I think parents are not even at the homes no more, man. So mm. uh, setting boundaries for their kids and their children, man, it's it's, That's it's true. crazy, man. And, and if they don't have no no guidance at home, you know, we can't expect them to do what's right outside the, outside their home. Right, right. Oh man, that's absolute. I mean, you know, even talk about that in a sense, do you know, I don't know if you if you know anybody, any of the players in the Chicago area that are out there doing any youth camps for basketball or anything like that, trying to get kids out of the street and all that, you know, if you know anything like that, you know, talk about that too. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of cats doing it, man. I mean, Jabari Parker doing things, Derrick Rose doing things. Mm -hmm. uh, we just need, we need the mayor, you know, the city behind us as far as that go. I mean, it's only so far that, you know, a Derrick Rose and a Tabari Parker can, you know, go. Uh, mm -hmm. Because a lot of these kids know they can't reach that level, you know. Uh, so they don't need some other kind of resources and avenues to make them feel wanted in their community as well, you know. So yeah. I think we need, the, we need the mayor and the, and the governor of Illinois to step up and, and, and create more jobs for, for these young cats in, in the city. Absolutely, absolutely. I hear you there. I definitely hear you there. Can you say that there was any change in, in your city since the time that you were young coming out of college or coming out of high school, you know, going through what you were going through in the city compared to the kids now? Yeah, there's a big difference. I mean, when, when I grew up, we had, uh, we basically had games, and, you know, we still got games, but we had games that had leaders, and leaders were basically controlling the area. So if they knew somebody that was on something real positive, they would they they'll push, you know, say, Man, you go ahead and do your thing, man, you know, you go you gonna be somebody. Right. But it wasn't that much gun violence. It was it was kind of controlled. It was organized. Now it's chaos. You know, mm -hmm. it's games but it's chaos. It's just, you know, clickish. So it's, it's hard to 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 mandate. 
what's going on now. I hear it. I hear it. Man, you know what's so crazy? It's like, you know, the generation now and even myself, like I'm young compared to the people in this room, but I can definitely say, you know, here I am. I'm the young one here. I always am. 27. 27 years old. <laughs> the industry age. Okay, what's your industry age? Uh, what's it? What's the Mine's twenty nine. What's your? Mine's twenty six. Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But you know, I know, I know now. You know, being at this age that I am, you know, I I'm able to still look back and I'm able to still That's find bad. people. But I'm, but it's because I'm interested in that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the kids now they don't necessarily know about the players from beyond, like players like you. You know, battle with somebody that you played with as well back then. You know, players back then, how skilled that they were. A lot of the kids now they just don't know. You know, and it's and there's avenues right. out there, but is it because of the interest? Is it because that they can't, or they just don't want to find out for themselves? I mean, because you played on one of the greatest college basketball teams that we've ever seen. You know, I know when you were in the Denver Nuggets after that first year, I believe the Denver Nuggets had they still hold the record for it was them and um. Oh, and the Golden State Warriors, that 320 point game. Did you play in that game, or were you on the were you on the team at that time? Yeah, 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 that was crazy. Yeah, and I mean, when I watched that, I was sitting there like, man, you know, they talk about teams not playing no defense now or they're scoring nowadays. I mean, y'all were at like 160 points. The other team was at like 150. Something like that was a crazy game. What? Yeah, we had, we, we had, we had my man Paul Westhead, man, who was at Loyola Marymount, and that's all he wanted to do was run and gun. He, he, he didn't want to play no defense. Yeah, no, nah, like see, and that was it was like you would watch the game, Chris, and like it'd be Hardaway, right? He come up, and the first thing he do, we just jack up the three. Oh, okay. Chris Mullen just be hitting threes okay. back and forth, you oh, know, yeah. like it, that's what that whole game was, and it's just like wow. So we complain about defense now, like look at what they played nah, back but, then. But it let's was be like, honest, like we was talking to Mark McGuire, and and he was saying like there was it was like harder to play back then. Yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, Marcus, from, from, from your experience, what would you say is harder, back then or now? Uh, I would definitely say back back then, especially when when Mark and Big Mark and uh, Isaiah and all those cats were playing, man. It was, it was a lot of hand checking, so no matter how quick you were, mm -hmm. they, they could slow you down with a... With a with one of those hand checks, you know. Mm, right. Now, in this era, it's, it's you know, they, they want it to be fast, a little bit more faster, so ain't no more hand checking. So, mm -hmm. that's why when I hear people talk about the different eras, if Michael Jordan was in this era, well, could he still do what he was doing? I'm like, man, come on, man. Mike would have averaged probably 50, easy. You know, in this era, but, but, and Martin Wyatt too. Martin Wyatt was a beast. He was one of the cats oh, yeah. that looked yeah, up yeah, to yeah, yeah. coming from the career. We got to talk to him. When we was talking to him, we got him to talk about that as well. That yeah, man, like, you couldn't guard him down in the post. That man had moves. He could do everything. Yeah, like, I didn't realize, like, he was saying, like, because, I mean, you played against them Bulls teams. He was saying that, like, he was like, they were just they were just as dirty as the Pistons were, but they just got away with it because they were the Bulls. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, yeah, and they had to figure it out, too. You know, yeah. that, man, the, the Pistons getting away with it, then why we can't do it? So, you know, they, they kind of mimic the Pistons a little bit, but, you know, they had one of those guys that can fly high up in the air, so it was it was hard to guard him, man. But the 80s and the 90s, man, was, was dope, man. And um, I, I like this era, too. I, love, I just love watching basketball, but... Absolutely. Where you guys? Where you guys calling from, man? Well, I mean, where um, I'm calling to? We're in New Jersey. Yeah, we're in New Jersey. New Jersey. Oh, y'all in Jersey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's where my peeps. Yeah. I got, I got my man. Uh, I used to come out there every summer, man, and kick it with uh, Nardi and them in no. East Orange. Huh? No, really? What? Man, I used to come out there yeah, all the time, so man. KG. And, and, and the trash and all of them, man. I used to. I'm kidding. I used to stay at their crib. <laughs> wow. Like, that's crazy. Wow. Like, but yeah. I got love for, for Jersey, man. Appreciate it all day. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, Absolutely. Tough. Tough. Absolutely. But, um, and you know, I, I had a question real quick, too. You know, I know for your overseas career. 
because, you know, now as we talk about basketball and how the game has changed, you know, you played overseas for a long time and you got to experience that. And I'm sure that affected you in a lot of ways for the positive for positive things. Um, now we're looking at the NBA where we're getting so many overseas players from overseas. You know, every single team now, somebody has somebody from an overseas type of a program or whatever that is. You know, just talk about how the game's kind of changed, you know, in that aspect. Yeah, I used to, I used to get kind of upset, man, because the way, the way the European game is played and the way they, uh, I wouldn't even say, I, I don't, they don't take care of the U.S. American players that's coming over to their country as much as we take care of them. Mm -hmm. They're foreign players when they come over to the U.S. and play in the NBA. For instance, I'll give you a perfect example. If you go overseas and sign a contract and you have two bad or three bad games, they, they, they might send you home on the plane and you don't get your, your money, the rest wow. of your money. Oh. If, you, if, you play, if they play in the U.S., you know, in the NBA, and they sign a guaranteed contract, they still get their money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and it's hard for, for, for somebody who has a family mm. who's trying to be the provider, you go over there and play overseas, and you basically got to play, you know, your butt off, you know, and, and you're going to have some bad games. Right. But they don't want that, you know, so they might, you might be on the next plane smoking and somebody else is coming in to take your place. <laughs> so I was trying to say that, we, you know, the NBA should step up or the U.S., USA basketball should step up and try to make somebody govern that over the overseas so those players that go overseas will have some kind of support so they can fight for their money because huh. they, they, they basically don't even care, man. Now, when you're playing over in China and Japan, they're more loyal. They, they respect the, the contracts, so they honor the contracts. But when you go to those other countries, man, it's hard. Oh, that's interesting. That's a, yeah, that's a good it. point. That, that seriously is. Yeah, because I, I didn't know that either. I had no idea that in those contracts it was Yeah, I mean, like I, I mean, it's like when I first went over there, they used to tell me, man, you're going to get a Bentley or you're going to get a Mercedes, you're going to get a Villa. <laughs> man, I got an apartment and I was driving a Honda. Oh shit! Wow, you know, how reality so, so it's not it's good. not as what, what what most people think of you know when they go over there. But there's some countries that do take care of their foreign players. Yeah, you know the players that come over. But there's, there's some countries, man, that straight you know just treat you like like a piece of meat, man. On to the next. Got you. Wow. So so what have you been up to since like your bat since like basketball and everything? I see you still involved with it. What have you been up to? Yeah, I um, I love man, I love the shorties, man. So so I get people calling me all the time. But I I got my own sports program where I, I run okay. uh, called Liberty Edge Liberty Edge Basketball, where I go run basketball camps, mentor, talk to the shorties, man, try to get them on the right straight arrow, mm -hmm. uh, just giving them some 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 knowledge, man, any kind of way I can uh, to uplift their spirit. You know, I get uh, it, it's. This game has just been good to me, so it, it's only right for me to, to give back. And I'm I'm big on being a role model. I mean, I know some people don't want that responsibility, but I'll, I'll take that responsibility fully. And um, I just want to give back to these shorties, man. No matter if they're from Chicago, New York, New Jersey, LA, California, San Diego, uh, Alabama, you name it. it you know, if I, somebody want to call me, you know, which I do get some a lot of calls from different cities and states, yeah. and people just want to, you know, get some advice, man, because they they knew I made it on every level at the highest level, so mm. why not talk to somebody that's been there? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to take up too much of your time though, so like, but yeah, like that sounds like uh, some good stuff. I mean, like if you ever need anything from us, like promotion or anything like that, we always. Willing to extend the hand. And absolutely, if you ever want okay. to come back in and talk yeah. to us, you know, anything like that, we'd love to have you back on. Appreciate everything yeah, that you've been saying. I just don't want to take up too much of your time. Man, I appreciate you guys, man. Anytime, man. Y'all, yeah. you know, just hit me up, man, if you want. Whatever, you know, I'm here, man, so. Maybe during, uh, maybe during the season, man. maybe during the season, we can get some of your professional analysis of the games and stuff. Yeah, some opinions on these oh, players, no, man. No, no doubt, no doubt. You know, let's get a let's get a quick thought. Who you think who you think is coming out of either side, west and east, just off of a pure opinion right now? 
Well, 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 we know we know what's going on. I mean, look, you never know. Injuries could happen, all that. Maybe Houston. Maybe you think with Carmelo, you know, I don't know. I'm just that's I why mean, I'm throwing it out there. I just I just with you when you see Golden State and the team that they have, man, and the way they play. It's gonna be hard to beat them, you know, mm-hmm. in a seven game series, man. So I, I gotta ride with Golden State on that on the west side. Now the East is very interesting now because you got um Boston is who looked real good without Kyrie mm-hmm. Irving. So can you imagine with Kyrie back, uh, how that team the makeup is gonna look. So I gotta ride with Boston coming out on the uh, coming out of that uh East, man. So okay. that's my prediction. Right. Early, that's my early prediction. Now, right, that, could right. change, that could change, you know, when the season starts. But right now, that's what that's what I'm predicting. Boston and Golden State. Absolutely. Sounds, that sounds like where I'm going too. Yeah. But yeah, nah, 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 we 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 gonna we gonna keep in touch with Mark. Mark definitely, said. definitely. That yeah, was dope. We we definitely gonna keep in touch. Like, we're gonna talk. Like if if you don't mind, we'll 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 talk during the season. Yep, no doubt. Right, I'm man. around, man. So. Well, I appreciate y'all guys for having me. Any, any time, man. Any, any time. It, it, we appreciate you coming on, even giving us 15 right. minutes Just of your time. Just giving us the time. Absolutely. All right. Dope. All right, man. Have a good yeah. night, man. I'll holler at you later. Thank you, man. Okay. Thank All you. Right. All right, baby. Oh, man. That's crazy. But, yeah, Marcus.